After the collapse of the oil industry in the 1980s, the city of New Orleans was desperate for revenue. City leaders hoped to capture some of the traveling public's imagination about New Orleans through tourism. Today, tourism is one of the city's biggest industries, and the center for that industry is here, Bourbon Street. If you visit New Orleans, chances are you will take a walk on this one-mile strip of road with liberally enforced laws and an anything-goes mentality. Bourbon Street cuts a wild path through the French Quarter, which was the original city of New Orleans and where a great deal of its residents made their homes. While the French Quarter still has a number of people living in it year-round, it is its reputation as an adult playground on a movie set that has made the area popular as the location for the second or third homes of the wealthy. As a result, the cost of real estate here has skyrocketed, making it difficult, if not impossible, for people of average means to own or rent. Many poor and middle class had long ago left the French Quarter because of its previous reputation as a slum. This left the area with cheap rents and plenty of bars and clubs offering a vibrant nightlife. A city rich in history with a penchant for winking at authority was the perfect location for bohemians of all types. Writers, artists, gays, and other refugees of more conservative locales. But what was as recently as the 1970s a lively, if rundown community has become an exclusive area of sorts, and that has affected many of its most colorful residents who could not afford to stay in the quarter in its new incarnation. Many of these people looked at the neighborhood on the other side of the French Quarter, another working class neighborhood called Faubourg Marigny, and many chose this as their new home. How do you correctly pronounce the name of Faubourg Marigny? Faubourg Marigny, that's, that's uh, how I've always pronounced it and heard it pronounced. And who's it named after? It's named after Bernard Xavier Philippe de Marigny de Mandeville, who was a member of the Creole aristocracy in New Orleans. Uh, he actually inherited the plantation that would later be subdivided into Faubourg Marigny from his father, who had purchased it in the late 1790s. It sort of builds layer upon layer. Um, a lot of these neighborhoods in the 20th century um, went through a period of decline as you have sort of an exodus out to the suburbs. Um, but I, I tend to think that the character of the neighborhood was already established, well established by that time, um, as early as the early 19th century. Um, you have different uh, wave, immigration waves also. You have lots of Germans and Italians moving, settling in the French Quarter in Marigny um, as the 19th century and early 20th century go on. Again, that's you know, giving you the feel of the kind of people who live here, the kind of what the houses look like, um, the tendency of people to live their lives out on the street as opposed to into the, in their homes or in you know, some other way. Um, and it's, it's a long, slow evolution, but I think that one of the things that really sets New Orleans apart generally as a city, uh, and this encompasses all of its neighborhoods, is just the, the unbroken line of that history. forced into proximity with other people. Now some people like that a lot and, and thrive on it and derive energy from it. Um, and I really think the kind of people who are drawn to the marrying are those kinds of people. Maybe artists or writers or people who are interested in people rather than wanting to be left alone and you know, watch TV all night.
made you choose to um, live in the Mirani? Uh, well, Mirani is a very special environment. It is, uh, it's uh, bohemian. It's uh, a bit country-like. Uh, it's very close, close to the French Quarter. And uh, it's very comfortable. It's kind of quiet, relatively speaking, less commercial. And uh, it's kind of a magnet for artists and uh, intellectuals of different stripes. Um, a lot of writers have lived in this area. And it's also one of the foremost spiritual centers of the Western world. In fact, the corner of Frenchmen and Charters is a spiritual crux. And of course, that's an added attraction. And what what, so that's what makes it attractive to creative and the intellectuals is the um, spiritual side of it. What else brings the um, creative individuals into this neighborhood? Mm, well, I think that's enough, frankly. Yeah. Uh, well, cheap rent uh, would have to be right up there with, uh, you know, the uh, uh, other, other qualities. But cheap rent, uh, lots of trees. Uh, we have trees here and uh, the ability to ride a bicycle without getting, uh, well, with significantly lower uh, likelihood of getting crushed by uh, an intoxicated driver. Um, I guess the proximity of bars uh, and the, uh, the, the general availability of alcohol around the clock is also an attractive aspect to most of the artists in the neighborhood.